Welcome to another part episode of the uh, budget build series. Um, today I am on a field trip. I came up to Seth's shop because he has a parts washer and I wanted to wash the cylinder head, wash the oil pan, wash parts, the oil pump, um, all that stuff. So we've had the parts cooking in the parts washer for a while. Um, I forgot to record some of that, but like they came out really, really, really clean. It's super nice to have friends that have nice things that you can use occasionally. Uh, it gives me reason to come visit Seth once in a while. Um, so while that's working, um, I wanted to just uh, take a look at his car because he's also getting ready for drift week. And I show up and he's like, hey, guess what I did? Keep in mind, we've got 20 days, 15 days, 16 days. And this is what he did today. Cut the whole back of his car off. It's crushed. It's, well, yeah, at least it was a car. <laughs> You've just created a whole bunch of work for yourself. I don't know exactly what this guy's got going on in his head, why he cut the back of his car off. like. A week and a half before drift week. It was so rude. But, yeah, but 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 yeah, the last but, time I did this, this is you, you have to drive this on the street. You realize you can't just like you can't drive it like this to the tracks. And like, oh, I didn't finish. I'm driving right, it to the track. You have to drive it on the street. Yeah, of quarters. It'll, it'll be a car at some point. Yeah. I don't. I don't fully understand. Remember the last time that I why you moved an things? entire car in like 20 days, and now I only have to go to the house <laughs> <and> go back <laughs> to the car in 20 days. So for some reason, he likes to create work for himself, but. I know Seth, he'll get it done. He'll be upset the day before we leave the trip and then maybe, maybe not, he'll have a good time, we'll see. That car's really cool though, it's supercharged, it's pretty fast, it's like, it's, it's well set up. But uh, yeah, it's nice to have a parts washer, you get the parts really clean and hot. The cylinder head came out really good. We did a vacuum check on the cylinder head earlier and uh, I picked out a good one because not only is the head straight, we checked it for flat and uh, we checked, we did a, <laughs> we did a vacuum check and everything is like perfect. So. Now that the head's clean, like I'm really excited. I think it's gonna come together and like be the right combo. Like the bottom end is really good. The head's really good. Yes. Um, it's so flat, I'm not even gonna, usually I always send the head to be cut, but like this one's so good. I'm just gonna clean it really good. Copper spray, new gasket, head studs, boom, ready to go. Um, so it's like 11 p.m. and I think Seth's shop is at least like at least three hours from my shop. It's so. 15 minutes. <laughs> it's in a different county. Uh, so it's 11 p.m. We're almost done washing. I'm still gonna put the head on tonight, so I know I'm gonna be up till one. But I figure I might as well start working late nights, like a couple weeks before we have to leave, rather than like three days before we have to leave. That's what you should be doing. How come you're not working on this? Who's the one moving an entire car 20 days before you leave? I mean, I made an entire car look pretty well. You're really you know, Yeah, I guess it's it, like roles are reversed. You yeah, did this last time, yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna get back to the shop, start bolting parts on, and see how far I get tonight. All right, it's uh, 1 a.m. I'm back to my shop with all the clean parts. Um, I just got done prepping the head gasket, which includes a good coat of copper spray. I never ever install a head gasket without copper spray. You can argue with me all you want, that's fine. You can disagree. This is the way I do it, and I never ever blow a head gasket. So, um, this is the head. It came out really clean. Um, thank you, Seth, for letting me use your parts washer. I just used a wire wheel and went through and uh, took a bunch of carbon off the valves and stuff. Um, if I had a bunch of time, I would actually go through the head and take all the valves out individually and clean them on the uh, um, bench grinder wire, wire wheel attachment and uh, really like clean the inside, outside, tops, bottoms, every part of the valve, and put them back in, clean the seats, all that stuff. But the vacuum check checked out okay. Um, so, and based on the time I have, I'm not gonna go through and do all that stuff. So this is pretty good, pretty good. Um, anyways, I cleaned that up. I probably should have done that before I washed it, but again, I didn't have a lot of time. I ran up to Seth, did that, came back, then cleaned it, sprayed it down with carb cleaner. Now, I'm just gonna slap the head on there and tighten down the head studs, and I'm gonna call it a night. And then tomorrow, we'll do the oil pan, oil pump. Um, this is just setting on there right now. I've gotta get the seals for the block and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so tomorrow, hopefully, the whole engine will be assembled, um, top to bottom. And then uh, the clutch should be here like Friday in a few days. And then I can put the transmission on and then stab it in the car. So that's the plan. 
All right, so it's 3 a.m. and uh, I got some progress made. Um, I got the exhaust manifold fitted. Uh, I just kind of want to see how it fit. This is specifically for an IS300, so I don't know how well it's going to work. You can see the turbo is pretty low mount. Usually these turbos are mounted up here. This manifold puts the turbo pretty low. Um, I did just order a turbo. I'll tell you guys about that one when it shows up. Um, I was able to find a turbo 2J exhaust cam, um, and this is a NA IS300 um, intake cam. The reason I chose to stick with this one is I measured versus a turbo cam, and this has higher lift. The duration is probably better on the other one, but being that it's VVT, um, the ability to control uh, the overlap between the cams, um, I, I think the higher lift will give us better performance. I'm not a mega cam expert, but I'm going to go with that. Um, I could be wrong. If I am, tell me in the comments because I want to know about it. It'll be too late. By the time I post this video, I'm not going to change it, but I want to know uh, what you guys have to say about that. Uh, this is a, a deep motor intake manifold. These on eBay are $6.99, $5.99, um, I got this in a trade deal. Uh, so I'm going to give this a value of uh, $300 because uh, based on what I traded and what I got out of it, uh, this, uh, yeah, the value of this I'm going to put at $300. Um, this came in a turbo kit on a car that I bought. I made my money on the car, so as far as I'm concerned, the turbo kit I got for free, that was my profit on doing that whole deal, so that has a cost of zero. Uh, these cams, all that stuff is stuff that I had, so that's not included. That's a used oil pump. Um, so up till now, all we've got on this part is the uh, intake manifold, $300. So these injectors, um, I also got in trade with something, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they are 1000 cc, um, they are new, still in the bag. Um, based on the trade that I did, I'm gonna give these a value of $200. And I'm gonna get these fitted up tonight in this uh, manifold and rail. All right, so I found something out today when I was working on this motor. Um, I went to go put the cam seals in. I told you guys last night that I put the turbo cam on the exhaust side and the stock NA cam on the intake side. And I thought everything was cool until I go to put the cam seal in and the uh, seal, what would you call that? The inside part, outside part of the cam where the inside of the seal rides on, it's a different diameter than the other cam. So everything bolts up in the cam, everything fits in the journals, it's all good except for the way the seal sits in there. So I put a turbo seal, um, non-VVTI I should say, non-VVTI turbo cam, put a turbo seal on and it fits around the cam, but does not fit inside of the uh, housing of the head. If I put the VVTI seal in there, then it fits inside there, but it doesn't seal against the cam itself. So. I'm gonna have to run the NA cams. It looks like that's the only solution I got. So, with short of like buying some expensive cams, which I'm not gonna do. So, unfortunately, don't get to run the turbo exhaust cam. Bummer. All right, guys, we're still jamming along. Um, last night I worked super late, like 4 a.m. or something. Um, tonight, Wes and I are doing the same thing. We got quite a bit done today. I didn't film because it was the middle of work day and we was just kind of just working. Just jamming. Um, yeah. So we've got quite a bit done. Uh, these are not the final valve covers. I got some with paint drying. We got the uh, manifold on, we got the whole front cover, everything assembled, all the timing done, the cams, all that stuff. So I ended up, I forgot to mention this earlier, I ended up taking out the turbo cam because the cam seal wouldn't fit properly. I think I did talk about that on video. I no. don't remember. No? no? Okay, so the cam seal didn't work. So I took it back out, put the uh, the non-turbo VVTi cam in the exhaust and so these are stock IS300 cams in this motor so we'll see how that works out got that all assembled um, what else am I forgetting did the oil pan ended up uh, I put the oil pan on without doing this uh, dash 10 oil drain because this is an NA pan and so I uh, had a dash 10 weld on fitting so uh, I did my best there welding that together 
Sometimes I do good aluminum, sometimes not, especially with a dirty oil pan. Not my best work, but it's on there. So um, I forgot to mention this also. The, uh, a long time ago, um, I started uh, making engine mounts for S13 to, uh, sorry, JZ to S chassis engine mounts. Um, there's quite a few on the market, but I think it was maybe like eight or 10 years ago that we, that we, uh, started doing this and I had some plasma cut and, uh, basically like a bunch of pieces that we weld together. This one, I was letting someone else scab together. This is not my best work, not my work, I should say, but, uh, these ones were already done and I don't really want to go through and make some right now. So I'm going to paint these up and get them on the engine. Uh, but it's a pretty simple, straightforward bracket. And uh, I never really tried to do production of those, but I did make a production quantity of, uh, of plasma cut pieces to weld together. So whenever I need some, I basically put them on the jig and weld them up. I've got this giant box of um, different pieces to put them together. I've got two different designs. Got the ones with the triangles and got one, ones with the circles. It basically fits together and you weld them up. A bunch of pieces. Pretty cool. Um, the plan was to start making them and sell them, but there's so many on the market now. Um, I just keep these here so I can use them when I need them. Anyways, I'm behind schedule so I didn't want to make some new ones. I'm just going to use those ones that someone else welded up. Uh, again, budget build, those are free zero cost zero uh we have an alternator this was a lifetime warranty alternator um for the toyota tundra so when you're doing the tundra alternator you do have to cut right here so wes already went ahead and cut this we cut about five millimeters just like straight right there cut on this part um if you don't it sits out like this and it makes the belt alignment crooked so by doing that it allows you to put it back in so it's touching so the belt alignment is uh, in line. That is the part number from O'Reilly. Um, if anyone decides to want to do this, this is a 130 amp alternator. It uses a uh, four pin plug on the back. And this we found that you can get from almost any Honda alternator in the junkyard. And with this, we hold this up. Yep. When this is in place like that, the top pin. So if you look at those four pins like that, the very top, the highest pin is the one that needs power for uh, the Excite on the alternator. So the other three pins don't matter. The one on top needs 12 volts switched, and then this one, of course, is your main stud. So, sweet little upgrade. Uh, we happen to have a gasket kit for this motor for a VVT uh, non-turbo, and so we have all new gaskets for that. Gaskets for everything, so normally I don't do a full gasket set on a motor, but we happen to have them laying around. Once again, cost zero. Alternator, cost zero, free. Uh, what, else do, what else do we put on here that has cost, Wes? Injectors, I did that last night. Manifold, I did that last night. What? Cam gear. Oh, cam gear. Uh, yeah, this is a Chinese knockoff cam gear. Um, cost, $30. $30. Ooh, yeah, the uh, valve cover gaskets we did not have in the set. Cost on those was $31. That is the uh, the valve cover gaskets that go between the valve cover and the cylinder head. So we'll add that to the list, $31 for those. Uh, so the plan tonight is to get everything buttoned up on this whole motor, basically top to bottom. I'm waiting for a clutch, clutch disc, clutch plate, all that stuff. Um, that is in the mail, it should be here in a couple days. We did, uh, Brody ran down to the clutch shop today and had them repuck an old SR disc that I had so we can have it in time. They did a pretty good job. Uh, just adding or pu putting new pucks on it. This one is sprung. This is probably the one that I'll run. Cost on this was $60. So that works with a CD09. We use a W58 flywheel and a W58 pressure plate. So, um, that stuff is still on the way. And uh, up to this point, I believe that's where we're at as far as cost of stuff. So my next move is to uh, paint up these engine mounts, bolt them on, and then uh, that gets us one step closer. 
Right, what are you doing? <laughs> jam out the music. Crank pulley. Nah, 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 It usually goes a lot better than this. <laughs> there it goes. I'm sure that crankshaft's happy in there. Like, uh, we please stop. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go find the finger dinger for this. That is correct. Two JZ crank bolt is a 22 millimeter. You got the heavy socket. The my weighted ears, socket. My ears are gonna love me. Look at that weighted socket. All right, let's do it. Six Ugga Duggas. Nice work, Wes. <laughs> Professionals. So we had to do something about these valve covers because they look terrible and there's just no redeeming qualities in this type of valve cover. So I grabbed some paint that I had and did the best that I could to make them look somewhat decent. I really didn't want to pay to powder coat them or go crazy with it. Also, they're not aluminum, so we can't weld to them. So the uh, PCV vent um, the dash tens that we normally weld to the top of a valve cover. We can't do that on these so uh, We have to uh, Cut threads in them, but we found some fittings that are so close to fitting I think I'm just going to kind of jam them in there and JV weld them. So budget build This is how the uh, valve covers came out and um, Tell me in the comments how much you hate these or if you like them Okay, so we have I think this is a quarter NPT and it's pretty close to fitting. It actually starts to grab thread when you go in because it's a tapered thread. So I'm gonna slather some JB on that one. This I think is like a eight ORB or something. And uh, it kind of goes in a little bit tight. So we'll put some JB on that one, get them both in there, let them get cured up a little bit. And then we'll put the ga gaskets on these and bolt them on the engine over there. Whee! Not you, the engine. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're canceled, Wes. Damn, okay. All right, so we have a problem with the header hitting the engine mount. Um, I've already trimmed it. I took care of it before I did any filming. Oh, there you go. There's a good shot. So I ended up trimming the motor mount quite a bit because the header comes really close. Now it's actually hitting the excessive mount that's in there. So I'm going to pull the I'm going to pull the manifold back off and uh, and check that out and see exactly what we can do if I need to modify that mount or if I can clock it a different way. Because I don't think this mount needs to be clocked any specific way, like we could twist it one way or the other. As long as uh, the rubber isolation is between there and there, that's all that matters. It doesn't, shouldn't matter how it's clocked in there. Anyways, so um, I had to cut the mount quite a bit and then had to scab some reinforcement back in it. I'm not super happy about this, but this is the only manifold I have at the moment that will work with this car. And it is designed for ISGS, which the mount would be further forward. So... Uh, I'm going to pull this manifold back off and show you guys what we're working with. All right. So you can see where I cut. There. I'm trying to find a good profile so you can see just how deep I cut it. Oh, there we go. Right there. So it's no longer really square anymore. And then I actually ended up cutting the mount also. And that gives just enough room to the header. That is, That looks terrible where I had to patch it back together. But it's getting late and uh, don't forget, it's just a drift car, bro. Just a drift car. Doesn't matter 
I would do better if it wasn't a drift car, but it's a drift car, so, you know. Disappointment. So we moved on to uh, starting to work on the fuel system. Um, Wes pulled the uh, fuel sending unit out of this car and sucked a bunch of old nasty gas out of it. And this car had a, uh, an aftermarket fuel pump, but uh, I have another tank that has a fuel sending unit with uh, dash six fittings welded to it. So I wanted to use that so we can go from uh, dash six to the surge tank and then surge tank to the engine. So. Um, in doing all that, we found that both of them have aftermarket fuel pumps. Uh, this is the one that we are going to use. This is the one that was in the car. And this, if I'm not mistaken, is a uh, 450 pump. So um, they both work. We're going to swap this pump to the sending unit that's going in the car so that, uh, so that it has a little bit better pump. Also, this has a sock, and I'm not trying to find a sock and put it on that. Path of least resistance. Uh, what do we got? Do they both work, Wes? Oh, yeah. I'll show you. Ground and power. Bruh, is that a power probe? It is. Nice. Whose is that? It's Jake's. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had one. The Cornwall guys got the poof. Let's see here. This one sounds a lot healthier, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Sounds like 450 liters per hour. Yeah. Nice. So we'll swap that over. We'll put it back in the car. Um, I don't know exactly what we're going to use for fuel. Um, I'd like to eventually be on ethanol, but we can't really get it easily here in Utah. So I'll probably get the car working on uh, 91 octane and then we'll swap over. But um, that's the next step is I want to start getting the fuel lines and fuel system and all that stuff ran. I decided to start working a little bit on the engine bay um, while Wes was doing the fuel system. These brake lines were kind of everywhere and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. So what I ended up doing is use the Chase Bay's master cylinder. I hooked it to the stock rear brake line. So this comes over and then goes to the rear of the vehicle. So I'll, I'll leave everything stock in the rear. Uh, the front, I came off the bottom of this T from the master cylinder and came down to this T, which is gonna go feed um, the driver's side brake caliper. And then this runs up and over next to the other one, and it goes to the opposite side, and that'll run the passenger side brake caliper. So, uh, everything will be running off of the uh, master cylinder. I suppose I could, um, put something in line there that uh, to be a brake proportioning valve. Um, I'll drive it without that first and see how it works. Uh, I'm not sure how important the front and rear bias is gonna be, especially with left foot braking, it might make, make a big difference. Um, so we'll try it and see what happens. Uh, but it cleaned up pretty nicely. I used some uh, P-clamps and self-tappers to get things kind of t tidied up there so the so the hoses can't just be flopping around. And then we have our Willwood master cylinder for the clutch, and that line is run. So I'm getting everything dialed so that when the engine's ready to go in, uh, everything else will be there ready to, to hook up. Uh, here's the engine as it sits now. I still need to do a wiring harness of some sort for it, and I spent a whole bunch of time trying to clearance this uh, exhaust turbo manifold to that engine mount. It was quite a pain to do. Um, I got to get a wastegate installed, and I really want to get this thing fitted in the vehicle to make sure that we're not going to have any restrictions with the turbo sitting over here, I don't want it to be too low where it's going to hit the shock tower or anything over there. Um, we might have to build a heat shield around this stuff. I'm not sure yet. I want to get it in the car so we can test that out, which I can't do until we get the transmission bolted to the engine, which I can't do until the clutch and flywheel shows up, which is going to be Friday, and today is Wednesday, now Thursday morning. So I'm going to get as much as I can done today. I'm sure a few parts will show up, but... I doubt it's going to be everything I need to get the transmission installed. So um, I also 
ordered a under dash heater box from Summit Racing. So you just run two 5.8 heater hoses to it, you mount the box, and then it's got um, a blower and a heater core inside of it, and it just blows hot air through two ducts. And then you can run the ducts up to your stock dash, or um, I actually ordered a uh, vent kit, so you can mount some vents throughout your vehicle. Main reason I'm doing this is because we're doing drift week in November, and it's very possible that we could run into cold weather, uh, even though we're in California and Arizona, and it's very possible that we could have uh, like fogging up defrost problems. So I want to make sure we have a defroster in there and all that stuff. So I ordered that. Um, there's nothing more miserable than being on a road trip and freezing to death. So it was worth the uh, 200 bucks to ensure that that's not going to happen. So let's add that to the list of cost. Um, the uh, heater control box with the ducting kit, 200 bucks from Summit Racing. Uh, let me look at anything else that I might have forgot to cost wise. Mm. Hoses, lines, fittings, this is all stuff that I had. Uh, fuel pump, we had. Yeah. So I'm going to call that a night and um, start on the next episode tomorrow. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, thanks for following along. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, I love getting a notification where someone asks me some question that I can answer and help them out with something if they're doing the same project or whatever you guys are up to. Um, I'd like to know about it, so um, please interact in the comment section. And uh, stay tuned because we will keep doing these videos until that car is done. So catch you on the next one. Bye.